Okay, I finally saw the freaking Warcraft movie. Are you happy? Are you happy? I hope so. I saw it with a friend of mine. Both of us have been fans of the games going all the way back to Warcraft 1. Yes, we're that old. And based on all the reviews this movie was getting, our expectations were not very high. It met our expectations. I can definitely say that. After watching those opening moments with the first orcs coming through the dark portal into Azeroth, and then right after that, the birth of Duratan's son, who is stillborn, but then Gul'dan revives the baby by sucking the life out of a very surprised deer in a scene that was far sillier than I think the director intended. After that moment, my friend leans in next to me and whispers, this is gonna be awful. Yeah, yeah, and it was. I mean, we still had fun, <laughs> don't get me wrong. We don't regret seeing it or anything. It was cool to finally see all these characters on the big screen, and it was probably one of the better video game adaptations I've seen, which isn't saying much, I know, but still, it was. You know, it was exactly what was advertised. And nothing more. Visually, it looked pretty solid. Duncan Jones and company really nailed the look of Azeroth. Stormwind, Ironforge, Karazhan, Dalaran, and what little we saw of Draenor before they went through the Dark Portal. It all looks pretty much as it should, and the orcs who are all largely CGI motion capture characters, and, you know, the, the look of the orcs themselves and their outposts, all looks fantastic. The story, however, is kind of a mess. And right off the bat, you can tell that they made this strictly with Warcraft fans in mind. Anyone who has not already played the games is going to be horribly confused. There's a lot of stuff in this movie that is not explained very well, or sometimes not explained at all. For starters, in order to power up the Dark Portal so the orcs can travel from Draenor into Azeroth, Gul'dan has to suck the life force out of many, many living creatures in order to gain enough energy, and he does this by sucking the life out of a ton of captured Draenei. The movie never explains who the fuck the Draenei are. As far as the movie's concerned, they're just these blue people who speak some language that only Garona can understand, because reasons. And after the orcs come through the portal, we cut to Lothar and Magni Bronzebeard having a conversation in Ironforge, and the movie is at least nice enough to tell you the name of Ironforge through a caption in the corner of the screen. Doesn't tell you anything else about it, and we never see it again after that brief scene. And come to think of it, I don't know if the movie ever even mentions Magni by name. Maybe it happened once and I just missed it, but yeah, I didn't even realize it was supposed to be Magni until I saw him towards the end of the movie wearing the crown. Like, oh, that's who it is. And then there's Medivh, who is known as the Guardian. Of what, exactly? Of his little tower? Of Stormwind? Of all of Azeroth? What exactly is he guarding? What does a guardian do? What are his primary duties as a guardian? And how does one become guardian? Is it like a self-proclaimed title or is it bestowed upon him by someone or something else? Is there an application process? Do you have to demonstrate certain skills? Pass a written exam? What does this entail? You would never know by watching this movie. Now, I know what it means, but that's because I've played the games. If you haven't played the games, you're not gonna know shit, because the movie's certainly not gonna tell you. And even if you have played the games, there are a few things here and there that they've changed, which is fine. You know, by all means, put your own spin on the story. There's no point in simply retelling the same thing we've already heard. But even some of the new things they introduce in this movie aren't explained very well. Like, Medivh and King Lane apparently haven't been on speaking terms for many years. We don't really know why. It's not explained very well. Medivh is also not on very good terms with the Kirin Tor. And that's another thing. Who the fuck are the Kirin Tor? Don't know. It's apparently a bunch of magical dudes, but that's all the movie's gonna tell you. But yeah, not really explained why. Khadgar's backstory has also been changed. He is no longer Medivh's apprentice, as he was in the game, 
And he's also no longer a member of the Kirin Tor. He apparently was a member of the Kirin Tor at one time, but has since gone rogue. And I don't mean rogue as in the World of Warcraft class, like he started carrying around daggers and ganking people. No, I mean rogue as in renegade. And this is pretty much rendered pointless anyway, since he goes back to the Kirin Tor at the end of the movie, so I'm not sure why they bothered to change this aspect of the character. It didn't go anywhere. The movie also explicitly says Garona is half-orc, half-human, which may not necessarily be a change, because at the time, she was under the impression she was half-human. It was only later on, after they retconned it, that they discovered she was actually half Draenei. But, you know, since this movie takes place during the same time period as Warcraft 1, her thinking she's half-human, even if she's really not, would still make sense. Um, her orcish half being on her mother's side, however, I believe is a change from the games. Uh, why they made that change, I don't know, but there it is. There is no mention whatsoever of Ner'zhul or Kil'jaeden. They just aren't in the movie, which honestly is probably for the best because they already had way too many characters they were trying to juggle, and adding a couple more into the mix is just going to make things even worse. In fact, no demons are mentioned at all in this movie, at least not by name. There's some sort of demonic presence that possesses Medivh towards the end, but I, I assume it's Sargeras, but he's never identified as such. We also have a couple of new characters that were created exclusively for the movie. One is Kalan, the son of Lothar. Don't know why they bothered, because the only purpose this character served was to get killed. That's about it. We also have Taria, the queen of Stormwind. About freaking time we got to meet the wife of King Lane. I mean, obviously, at some point he had children, I would assume a woman was involved in the process there. You know, that's kind of how these things work. Finally, we get to see a portrayal of this character. Uh, she was all right. She was a welcome addition to the story for the most part. But one weird choice they made was also making her Lothar's sister. And Taria is played by Ruth Nega, who is clearly mixed race. And Lothar is played by a white dude from Australia, Travis Fimmel. And I'm supposed to believe these two are siblings. Really? Maybe if one of them was adopted, or if they were half-siblings, that I could buy. For most of this movie, the parts that I actually cared about were the parts that involved Duritan and the Horde. It really seems to me that this is supposed to be Duritan's story, and the humans are just kind of secondary. And for what it's worth, his story is handled reasonably well. I liked what they did with the character. I liked Toby Kebbell's portrayal of the character. I liked his wife Draka and his friend Orgrim Doomhammer, Blackhand. Blackhand was a beast, good god. And Gul'dan... Gul'dan was okay, although I did think it was a little bit ridiculous how Duritan and Draka were the only two members of the entire horde who could tell this guy was obviously evil. Apparently the orcs in this movie are every bit as stupid as they were portrayed in the first game. Zug Zug! Also thought it was a little silly that they basically made Duritan's son, who, if I remember the lore correctly, grows up to be Thrall, into Orc Moses. Like, Draka actually puts him in a basket and floats him down the river after they escape from Gul'dan. Like, really? Come on now. And as for the human side of the movie, for the most part, I really couldn't care less. I mean, I kind of liked Cadgar, despite the pointless changes they made to the character. You know, he was likable enough. And I did... I admit this was completely ridiculous, but I did like how they incorporated the polymorph spell into the movie. It's like, Lothar and the guard are arguing with each other, and all of a sudden, SHEEP! <laughs> that was so awesome. Otherwise, it was mostly a whole lot of nothing, which is really too bad considering some of the talent involved. I like Ruth Nega, I like Dominic Cooper. It was interesting to finally see them with their natural accents for once. Medivh was just kind of okay, and I wasn't really a fan of Lothar or Garona, especially with the romance of sorts that kind of develops between those two. Just, no, I was not buying that at all. They had zero chemistry. And the ending of this movie was 
kind of a letdown. It started out okay. You know, you have Garona killing Lane, which did happen in the games. It's handled a bit differently in the movie, but the way they handled it, I thought was fine. Basically, you know, they're facing off against what left of the horde that managed to get through the portal before it was closed and lane realizes okay there's no way i'm gonna get out of this alive one way or another i'm dying today garona you have a chance to live if you kill me because then you'll be hailed as a hero and you can survive among the horde and hopefully someday you can eventually gain some influence among them and help to bring peace between our people blah 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 whatever just kill me already and reluctantly she does and it works. She's failed as a hero by the Horde. And that right there should have been the end of it. But for some reason, it kept going, because suddenly Lothar swoops in on a griffin and starts going ape shit until he gets knocked the fuck out. But for some reason, they don't kill him. I don't know why. Seems perfectly reasonable. They are at war, but no, they leave him alive because... Apparently, Blackhand wants to challenge him to a Mock Gora. I think I'm saying that right. It's basically a duel of some sorts in the Orcish custom, but usually it's used to challenge for a leadership position. Like earlier in the movie, Duratan challenges Gul'dan to a Mock Gora and loses because Gul'dan basically uses his magic and cheats. But here it's Lothar and Blackhand... And they never really explain the rules of the Mach Gora very well, because when Duratan and Gul'dan do it, no weapons, no armor, just mano a mano. When it's Lothar and Blackhand, full weapons and armor, go. Make up your mind, what are the rules for this thing? And then the fight lasts about 10 seconds. Weak. If they had just ended it right after Garona kills Lane, I think it would have been much better. Instead... Ugh. Overall, this is a heavily flawed movie. I certainly would not call it a good movie at all. It's pretty bad, but I still enjoyed it. I had fun. And if they make a second movie, which they probably will, because this made a shitload of money, especially in China, and they certainly baited a sequel with the baby Orc Moses thing, you know, I'll probably see that too. As far as a recommendation for Warcraft fans, only. If you're a fan of the games, you will probably like this, at least to some extent. If you're not, there's nothing for you here. You're just going to be horribly confused. And that's all I got to say about Warcraft. So until next time, Loktarogar.